Welcome to Zarnia for Games and Geekery. I'm John. I'm Adil. We are Born to, to be, be Wild. Wild. And today we are going to be looking at space, 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 space. All right, let's talk about space, space. Adil, what kind of game is this? It's it's a very interesting game, John. Okay, that <laughs> sounds like you're stalling, like my car. <laughs> well, and the reason I'm stalling is because I don't it, the the kind of specific mechanic doesn't come immediately to mind. You, it's not a deck builder. It's not you know the kind of traditional tableau builder that you might think of. But you do essentially have a fully formed tableau to start off the game. You've got uh, a ship in every one of your sectors, so sectors one through twelve. And the reason for that is because you're rolling two dice during the game. Oh. Uh, so you can use numbers from 1 up to 12. Oh, so it's like Catan. Sure. I mean, at the beginning of your turn in Catan, you roll the dice and you everybody gets income. Yeah, you get resources. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, it's similar in that way. And, and you, so you do have this tableau that starts off. And I think the thing that makes it different to Catan is that you can build up um, each of those sectors... Uh, in the way that you would like. So you have a whole lot of ships here uh, that you could buy and add to your tableau in specific spots based on the probabilities that, that you would like to leverage. So, you know, we're building up a, a fleet. Each ship represents a part of your fleet, like in the diff in the 12 sectors you control. Mm. All right, and the dice will determine which like they land on and what resources you get from your awesome fleet of ships. Yeah, and so there yeah. are a couple of different things that you can get. One is just income, so uh, as in coin income, and that's from trading uh, goods. So you're, you're going to receive some money, and then you'll use that money to buy other cards, right? So other ships that you would add to your fleet. The other thing that you can you can get is your rent. <laughs> so yeah, your wage, your salary. Sure, you can build up your base level of income, right? So all right. so that when you uh, use up all your your uh, money, all your funds to buy a new ship, you get reset to that um, particular level. Uh, and that is something that makes it a little bit different to other games like this. Is every time when you buy a ship, you actually have to use all of your money, whether or not you use all of your money to pay, to pay for the ship. So I can have twenty, uh, you know, gold or solar coins credits <laughs> credits uh i can have 20 and i buy a like a ship that's worth only three i lose that all you lose the rest of it okay. correct the third piece of uh, information that you need is that you will receive points from some of your ships as well and that's really how you win the game yeah a pure victory point track you're racing to get to 40 points which triggers the end of the game and then whoever after that has the most points will win what I found extremely interesting is that you needed to change gears at some point, right? So for me, it felt like there were two very distinct um, phases to the game almost. In the first phase, you're building up your economy, you're building up your engine, you're building up um, all of your resources. Whereas at some point, you need to cut and run. You need to kind of start building on your, your victory points and, and really push that engine to make sure that you get as many points as possible as quickly as possible. I think you can't let anybody at the table start going off and getting those victory points and kind of, you know, go like, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll catch them later. You do need to change your strategy at that point, mm -hmm. change gears and start pushing to, to try and catch them up. And there's even another um, period of, like, I think, gear shifting, which is in your very late game, you have these bases or these colonies, um, which uh, they're not ships, they're not your fleets, they are your final closing in, you, you got the system. There's only one for each system available, and they just give you a raw victory po point bonus. And they shut down that, that sector completely, so you don't get any income from it thereafter. Uh, it just gives you a set number of victory points and that's it. And, and they're quite, you know, they cost a lot of your coins um, to be able to, to buy those. So mm. as you say, you have to work out whether it's time to move into that yet or not. And you know, there, you only need 40 victory points in the whole game. So from three up to 14, those are the amount of victory points available from buying bases. So it's, it's worth it. One of the interesting things I've, I've found about like how this engine works 
You do earn um, a certain value on uh, when you roll the dice, and you also earn when your opponent rolls, but they're different sets. So each card has a, a blue value and also a red value. And the red value is only active when it uh, gets replaced as the top card. And then every time your opponent rolls uh, that sector's value, you get everything in your fleet that's mm. red. So you can build, really build up if you focus on a particular sector and if what you're, you might expect people to do is to focus on the, the numbers that will get rolled more often than others. So like the sixes, the sevens and the eights are going to be kind of the highest probability. So people might want to load those up or you might want to load up the ones that might be stronger. So some of these in the fleet might be stronger, but actually get rolled less often. So yeah. something like a 12. Although do remember, you know, like, yes, seven is, uh, you know, the highest, uh, you know, like the, the median distribution. I don't know if I use the word median, right? Probably not. However, you can split the dice. So you, if you rolled a, a three, you can um, split, or if you rolled a two and a one, you can either take a three or you can take a two or a one. Uh, two and a one. And yeah. you, so you mentioned the red and the blue, but the, the other one is green. So sometimes in, you know, in some of these, these ships have a green ability, which you can use at any time. So you can use it in oh, your yeah. turn or in other people's turns. Well, I mean, like, I, I think, you know, each card has like, you know, the blue value and the red value, yeah. but they do have different, uh, but some of them have different powers and powers can be split into blue powers and green powers. And I really wish they had uh, gotten a different color for that blue uh, because they've already using blue. So I don't know. Color is a thing about this game that I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah, it's very vibrant. It is like you took LSD drops straight into your eyeball and then tripped a little bit. You know, you got red clashing with green. You got yellow on purple. You've got, oh, mm. I kind of love it. <laughs> I like the, the the psychedelic feel of it, the, the greens together with the purples and the pinks. Have I, you ever been tested for color blindness? I have not. Okay, well, <laughs> there you go. Anyhow, I like the little details. Like I can tell that this isn't a case of, oh, these designers were in any way lazy. They, there's some very beautiful, like very nice details. Correct. Um, every ship has a name um, and those names are like, uh, you know, callbacks to big um, science fiction and fantasy writers. There's a Tolkien. Um, Asimov. Asimov, you know, Scott, all kinds of uh, things. Roddenberry. Roddenberry. It's lovely little details like that. They say, ah, you care about these things. Yeah. But, you know, like, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of the, the sort of like light cartoonish um, isometric layout of the ships. But hey, you know, they made strong choices and they made choices they love and mm. you like it. Uh, I think that there is a, a line that designers kind of need to play around with around how much do you give people to, to, to actually... Uh, work with right so how much of the game uh, is laid out uh, uh, to the letter and how much of it is is there for people to explore and kind of maybe come up with uh, a story on their own for ah, example yes. you know what exactly is UES because each ship is named UES something and we still haven't worked it out well have we? yeah I mean you know it's probably you know like uh, utterly engaging source but you know it could be anything <coughs> But then there's this one, the PSS. What the hell is that ship? <laughs> Don't know. What's the PSS? I do not know. There is like lore that we have not it's ac missing. We have no access to. <laughs> What's going on? I've looked through the rule book. I can't PSS. find it. What does PSS mean? Do you have any theories? If anybody knows, found out somewhere else, please tell us in the comments below. Okay, so the thing I liked the most about this game was uh, building up a really powerful little cluster uh, in a sector and using some of the, like the power cards to shift around um, the results of the dice to my own bidding. Um, that was a strategy that relied a lot on luck, I think, but uh, also a fair bit on skill, you know, and foresight, handsomeness, ingenuity, you know, charm, humility. That's it, I've done. I found... Imagination. <laughs> <laughs> Raw charisma. Carry on, carry on. I found the, the fact that you can get income in other players' turns, I found that to be quite an interesting one because it does make you pay attention to other people's turns, right? And building it up so that you, you're almost getting a, a, a kind of passive income 
Um, so it's like you not doing the work really to, to try and get that. So I, like I, I have always liked games that leverage that in a way. The thing that frustrated me a bit about that here is quite often the thing that you want to get in other players' turns, which might be victory points or it might be coins or whatever, um, is not what you can find. So it does mean that you get an element of luck that comes in because sometimes you're looking for a particular resource. It might be points. You might be ready to make that change to points and you want to put a whole lot of points into the um, the upper section in the in the red section, but you, you know, the, it just doesn't come up or the specific sector that you're trying to leverage you can't find a card um, to, to go into that particular sector. So there is a bit of luck coming up. You can't really cycle through the decks very quickly. Um, there's no way for you to move them in except for buying them. And so if someone just skips around and then you stuck with the same cards in the, in the market. I find that you know there is a bit of luck as to what you find. I'm willing to forgive it because the game's pretty quick, right? So the, the game it doesn't hang around that long. Uh, it's probably an hour long if you're playing one-on-one uh, -on -one or you know maybe a little bit longer if you're playing with more players. I feel like the the sweet spot is probably three players. Mm -hmm. um, you want to have more than just one other player because you you know you, you're setting up your cards to get income in other players' turns. But you also don't want to be sitting around for four turns before you get your you know come back to you. I, I don't think so. Maybe three, maybe maybe four. Yeah, we'll give it a try. Yeah, I think we should. More rivals just means more people to crush. I'm sensing a theme, John. What? I like winning. Yeah. You like winning. Uh, no, you like winning. Uh, you like winning. You win, John. <laughs> no, that's not... That's not a satisfying win. <laughs> that's oh, not... so now you don't just want to win, you want to be satisfied, too. Yeah, I want to be satisfied. That's what satisfied means. Well, I'm not here to satisfy you, John. <laughs> I'm very upset. But are you satisfied? I'm going to say, write an email to my therapist. <laughs> Whoa. Well, now that we've lost John, uh, thanks for watching our review of Space Space. Thank you to Solopop for providing the review copy. This has been Zania for Games and Geekery. I'm uh, back because the deal's just leaving things up. All right, all right, all right. Um, where were you? Like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Please share. Please tell us what you'd like to see. Also, we have a Patreon. Whoop you can get the link down below. Uh, it's all kinds of little bonuses. For instance, you can hear the thoughts of this guy. I don't have any thoughts. I can hear your thoughts right oh, now. Right. And it's mean. That's mm. not a nice thing to say about a person, even in your own head. Situation I have to like work with.